Blessings everyone and good evening and welcome to Anita and the Man. Once again, I'm Brian Hewitt and on behalf of MCM Ministries Bible LA, we welcome you to our 6 p.m. broadcast here, Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast of North America. And blessings to you at the end of your day, the start of your day, in the middle part of your afternoon, wherever you are in your part of the world, we ask you to lift up your raise the praise, lift up your repentance as Jesus and the creative creator pours down their new mercies upon you every day. Now, and we also invite you to stay tuned with all of our exciting updates at BrianChewitt.com, BrianChewitt.com. And we have a translator auxiliary that just opened up for our broadcast going overseas. And we have volunteers already translating our services from Singapore, France, Spain, Mexico. So, blessing the Lord. And we have because we do ask, seek, and knock. So if you have not, it's because you ask not. And we welcome you to join us at, again, to visit us and get to know us and ask us questions at, again, at BrianChewitt.com. Going into our lesson today, we ask you to get your Bibles and a, a very empty sheet of your notepad going. And really, we're going to be blessed. We're going to, again, be in Revelation chapter 2. We're only going over 8 through 11, and this is, again, a book that should not be swallowed up in just a few lessons. So 8 through 11, and we're speaking of, the, of Samaria. And we are going forward. Um, also, in tomorrow's lesson, we're going to go backwards and speak of the seven churches, as we are breaking down slowly, and the seven golden lampstands. And, okay, brothers and sisters, as we are, as I am speaking, let's all... Get going and let's lay our hearts before the throne of God. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time. We thank you for your love and support of this day. We thank you for the end of this evening here in North America as we get into a strong fellowship here with you, O Lord. The unity of the Holy Spirit, the living word of God, teaches us your love, teaches us the places where you want to place us, opens our mind and gives us the renewing of the mind and to, to bring this book this heart of a warrior to your passage, to your message, to go and proclaim the living word of the Lord and to teach the elect that should have been taught already, to teach the elect in other countries that are starving for the living word of God. In the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come into this time frame, this message, so let's open up our Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. We're just going through 8 through 11. Four verses. Yeah? And unto the angel of the Lord, and unto, and unto the angel of the church of Samaria, Samar writes, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say, which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye, may, ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Shall not be hurt of the second death. So, brothers and sisters, we are going to really take our time with this, and let's really get into this location. Samaria was located 40 miles from Ephesus. It was called the Crown City. It was famous for commercially because it was a port, a port city. Its main, ex, its main export was myrrh, spice that was used in, 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 in balming, and for perfume was a famous religious center. There were temples to Zeus and Diana. There was a great street paved with gold running through the center of town, connecting these two temples of Zeus and Diana together. Samaria was famous for its theater and for its music center. It was a great city of great wealth and culture. But it was also a city that hated Christians. They stood opposed to all the sin and idolatry of that city, and they suffered as a great result. The church in itself represents a time period between 100 A.D. and 312 A.D. It is, a, it is the martyr church. Let's join our risen Savior and the Savior that is coming back called Faithful and True 
as it comes to this church that is facing the fire and the lion. So this prosperous little city has this poor little church inside of it, and the church in itself does not see what it's doing wrong. The church is comfort. In the person of Christ, the first and the last, Jesus has already been there. He tells them he is the one in charge. Nothing can happen to them except he allows it to. Romans 8.28 But we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. According to his purpose. Was dead and I'm alive. He was already conquered. He said he has already conquered death. And for these people, he can identify with their sufferings. Jesus can help us through anything. In the perception of Christ, verse 9, he knows. He knows their pressure. They will work, they worked in spite of trouble. The persecution that was there and what will come. Their poverty. They had no material wealth. Their faith in Jesus had, had caused them to lose all they had financially. So they blamed Jesus for the problems. A, a parental statement, we, we were poor materially but were rich spiritually. Rich in things that the world can, could not touch, but, and a believer who gave much and lost all. Their provocation, the synagogue of Satan. Jews who were trying to destroy the Christian church in this, in this, in this city. Satan is an imitator. He has never had an original idea. Jesus was prov provoked. The godly church will never be liked. The church's commotion, the misery of it. The suffering is sure. We need to be prepared. Suffered some more on the way. Jesus knows what is ahead. If he will let him and he will tell us the mystery of it. Not that Satan does it, but that God allows it. God has a plan, but for you who follow in Christ, who, who edify and give yourself that spiritual nutrition every day in the living word of God, you have nothing to worry about, but stay with the your faith, stay with the blessings of obedience, your offering of obedience. Our faith being tried comes out more perfect. Ten, day, ten persecutions under ten emperors. We may suffer, but Jesus has put a limit on it. In verse 11, the, the church's conquest, the secret of it, the faithfulness. You may not be you, you may not understand, but you can have a lot of things, but you, but you can be faithful. You must be faithful. A believer facing the world, we must, as believers, face the world every day. The sweetness of it, the crown of life. The world may kill us here, but it can never touch us in God's world. The crown of living it up, many will, will receive this crown. We can face trials with confidence if we, if we are assured of our salvation and the eternal nature of it. Are you suffering because of Jesus today? If so, rest assured that Jesus knows, cares, and understands. But even better than this, he will go with you th through your trials and afterward take your home to glory. Take your home to glory. That new heart, that new life, that new beautiful truth coming, coming to you. We come, brothers and sisters, and giving a deeper breakdown for all of us through Revelation chapter 2, 8 through 11. 8 through 11 is we live in times that this is not a joke. This is not a joke. I have turned my wife into a news junkie where she is informed every day, every hour. We sharpen our, our irons with, with the living word of God every day. But as we pick up the news and she pick, reads, watches the BBC with me in the news and Yahoo News and Google News, she has grown a deeper insight of the book of Daniel, the revelation, where we are today at the end times of end times. We teach this, we preach this, we live this, we, we give this unto you, and we want you 
not to be of of the elect that no say they are Christians but they are not keeping up with the word of God they're going to be easily fooled and with this brothers and sisters our Lord Jesus is the first for by him were all things made he was before all things with God and, and is God himself he is the last and he will be the judge of all and is the first and the last who was dead and is alive he is a believer's brother and friend, and he must be rich in the deepest of poverty, honorable amiss in the lowest of uh, abasement, and happy under the heaviest tribulation, like this particular church we're speaking of. Many who are rich as to this world are poor as to the next, and some who are poor outwardly are inwardly rich, rich in faith and good works, rich in privilege, rich in gifts, rich in hope. Where there is spiritual plenty, outward poverty may be well born. When God's people are made poor as to this life, for the sake of Christ and a good conscience, He makes all to them in spiritual riches. Christ arms against coming, coming troubles. He arms us against coming troubles. Fear, fear none of these troubles, brothers and sisters. Fear none of these troubles. And come into this time, come into this life, come into this world right now. It should be, it should be tr to try, try them, not destroy them. Observe the sureness of the reward. I will give thee; they shall have the reward from Christ's own hand. Also, how suitable is it for a crown of life? The life worn out in his service or laid down to the to his cause shall be rewarded, and with much better life which shall be eternal. The second death is unspeakably worse than the first death, both in the agonies of it and it is eternal death. It is indeed awful to die and to be always dying. If a man is kept from the second death and wrath, wrath to come, he may patiently endure whatever he meets within, within this world. Amen. So we have a lot to meet here, and now you know why we're going through this at God's pace, not my pace, not your pace, but God's pace. And with this, brothers and sisters, we come into God's expression, His love, His truth. God's beautiful moment that He gives to all of us. The applications to all and to all that are coming upon us and with us and flowing within us. The church, the Christ, the Christ is the author and the answer. Again, we see how the perfections of Christ's persons and work answers to the needs, problems, and conditions to each church. Since many in this church died for their faith, Christ assures them of their resurrection and future re rewards because he is the first and the last. The eternal God who became a man died and rose again. So we go into 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he gave us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. From the dead. Acts chapter 2, verse 24. But God raised him up, having released him from the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held in in its power amen amen literally the Greeks say he came to be dead and began to live and came to life again an obvious reference to the cross of the resurrection it describes what we might call an experience an episode of passing phase he went through for us death he passed into death through death and out of death it came to life in a triumphant event the resurrection and he's coming back again this time with a vengeance he's coming back for the bride he's coming back for the rapture are you rapture ready as my wife said about a week ago are you in tune with your own application the risen Christ the risen Christ is one who has experienced the worst that life could do to him. Are you prepared to carry the cross and be crucified daily, to die daily, to have your faith, faith measured by how deep you are crucified upon that cross? 
No matter then what happened to the Christians or to us, the Christians in Samaria or to us, our Savior has gone through the worst life can bring. As such, He is the one who feels for us in our suffering with special love and compassion as, ever pre as is ever present to come to our aid and comfort. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15 through 18 and set free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. But surely his concern is not for angels, but he is concerned for Abraham's descendants. Verse 17. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he could become a merciful and faithful high priest in all things relating to God. In all things relating to God. To make atonement for the sins of the people. For since he may, since he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. Brothers and sisters, for Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. But we do not have a high priest incapable of sympathizing with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. <clears throat> verse 9. Jesus Christ knows your tribulation. The pressure, the literally crushing beneath the weight, the pressure of events in, in this particular church, and the force of circumstances trying to crush the Christianity out of them. He knows your poverty. The word poverty describes absolute poverty and complete destitution. Christ offers no criticism for this church. Christ offers a great example for this church. The saints were faithful in spite of suffering at the hands of the Jewish persecutors, and I am sure that they thought they were poor, but in contrast, which thought it was rich and was poor, these saints were rich. And we'll be seeing that in chapter 3, verse 17. The application, our Lord, so faithful to know and observe our lives and needs. First assures them he knows and cares for their condition and, and with great suffering on his behalf. And then commends them for their spiritual wealth in the midst of their physical poverty and suffering, much of which was brought out about by the religious Jews of Samaria. So while poor, they were rich. They were rich positionally in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavy realms in Christ. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, But in fact, if you happen to suffer by doing what is right, you are blessed. Verse 15, But set, chap, I'm in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, But set Christ apart as, as Lord in your hearts, and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. Verse 16, yet do it with courtesy and respect. Keep a good conscience so that those who slander, slander you, their good conduct in Christ may be put to shame when they accuse you. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if God wills it, than, than for doing evil. Brothers and sisters, he knows your persecutors. These were the religious Jews who claimed to be the seed of Abraham. They were, they were, but only physically. Spiritually, they were Satan and, and under the power and control. John chapter 8, verse 33 and 34. We are descendants of Abraham, they replied, and we have never been anyone's slaves. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them and said, I tell you the solemn truth. Everyone who practices sin is a slave of sin. Israel was called the congregation of the Lord, but here Christ calls these unbelieving Jews the congregation of Satan. John 8, 33. We are descendants of Abraham, they replied. How can you set us free? We've never been slaves to anyone. How can you say you, you, you will become free? We come, brothers and sisters, and the freedom and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come, brothers and sisters, and understanding every aspect that it comes and gives to us. 
every aspect, every trust, every truth. The truth shall set you free. The truth is going to make this happen for all of you. God, give us your love. God, bring us to that strength, your confidence, your love, your wisdom, hope, faith, and love coming into the unison, the unity, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. How did my wife get to be so deep? We actually met each other about 4,000 miles apart, about 30 plus years ago. I was in a kingdom by a mighty river in Finger Lakes, and she was near Hollywood, and wondering why she can't party anymore. And all step took came forward into one step forward to being redeemed with Christ. Stepping forward one step, one step forward to the altar of the Lord. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, that's you. I say unto you, brethren, let's be saved. Let's be part of God's army. Let us not have sin separate us. Let's not have the ways of man control us. Commit your life to the Lord. Have God command your thoughts so he can place you where he wants you to be. Answered prayer starts in heaven, but we must move into the realities of today's world. We need Christ. You want to be a peacemaker? You want to be just like Kofi Annan? Move into Christ, please, because peace cannot be negotiated. Peace can only be prayed through. Prayed through in the matchless name of Jesus. So let's repeat this off to me. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner. <clears throat> I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn my life over and to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I ask you, God, to send the Holy Spirit into my life and, and to take control to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward tonight, to this morning, this afternoon. My wife is singing your name right now. I am praising your name. And most important, the angels are praising your name before the throne of God, the creator of the creation, of the universe, of everything. I'd rather have the angels of heaven sing my name before the throne of God than a rusty, dusty bartender who's been doing the same old, same old for the past 50 years. So we move into the expressions of the new day. We're going to focus on our reality of our redemption with God because we are redeemed. We are redeemed as we focus on this day, as we focus on this moment, as we focus on this time. We are redeemed. Let us move into this place right now. Let us move into that message. Come, come, come. Moving into verses 10 and 11, the breakdown concerning fear and suffering. Do not fear. There's literally fear nothing. No matter how small or how severe the one who has overcome death says, fear nothing. They could cast a burden on the Lord. He cared and, and has and shall overcome all for you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your parents to t tell your request to God. And the peace of our, of our God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, who, who, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, with, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is something excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Live these things. I say Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 a great deal. Hearing is receiving, but is hearing dove, done. Love is the first gift. Peace of mind. Peace of long endurance, long suffering, but joy comes in that morning. We need to have skilled leaders that can move into the expressions of the end times, working against those countries that wish to just to destroy itself. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Don't be afraid, 
for I am with you. Don't be frightened, for I am your God. I strengthen you. Yes, I help you. Yes, I uphold you with my saving right hand. Yes, brethren. Concerning, concerning the future and testing. Now remember, God proves us that the devil tests us. Some people would face prison and severe testing, even death. Even death. It would be for 10 days, rather than a short period, or perhaps a reference to 10 principal persecutions under the Roman empires. But note the con connection with this, with Satan. The persecution is attributed to, to the devil. It is a continuation of the serpent's battle with the Lord Jesus and those who belong to him. Human means and men and, and those we see persecuting the church of Jesus Christ, but invariably behind the scenes is the old arch enemy, the prince of the power of, of the air. But never fear, the binder of believers in prison shall be bound. He is, he is a defeated foe. Romans 16, verse 20. For God of peace will quickly crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Be with you. Brethren, this also starts with a relationship. My wife and I invite you to be a part of our this relationship with us, our ministry. Full name is Morningstar Communications Network. Ministry name, MCM Ministries, Bible LA. We are 501c3 certified church here in the United States. We invite you to travel with us. We, we invite you to guide with us and be with us. <clears throat> to travel to the countries of need from our African connections in Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, Cape Town, South Africa, and many more. To Europe, to Asia, to Australia in, in the 2013 early part and northern and southern India at the end of 2012. Our work continues of course in Canada and of, of course our work much less work continues here in Los Angeles, California. Our broadcast times as we say come at the Pacific Standard Time 6 a.m. 11 a.m. 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. You can go over to our, our, our broadcast calendar over our website at bryantchewitt.com if you don't wish to send us a donation over our website, you can go to our contact link, grab our address, and send us a check payable, payable to MCM Ministries. And we thank you ahead of time for your prayers and support. And quickly going over verse 11, the breakdown. The promise to the overcomer is that he shall not be hurt by the second death. The second death is eternal separation from God and the, and the lake of fire. Believers may face physical death, but because they have at a second birth, no believer will ever face the second death. Then why this promise? Does this imply the possibility of the loss of eternal life? Regardless of what this passage means, it is emphatic negation of the, of the possibility. Some in Samaria would die in a martyr's death, so the Lord is reminding them of this fact. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, 1 and 5. Although you were dead in your transgressions of sins, even though we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ by, by grace, you are saved. By grace you are saved. You have, brothers and sisters, all, all coming to you. It is massively an understatement the Lord Jesus Christ says, in effect, the first death may, may hurt you briefly, the second not at all. John 10.10 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and may have it abundantly. Abundant love, abundant grace, abundant truth for eternity. It's all yours, brothers and sisters. It is all yours. So, we're going to really do some recap after recap. Again, we've just got into up to chapter 2, 8 through 11 today. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for blessing us and guiding us as having the hearts of a warrior. You put on our breastplate of righteousness every day. We have that shield of faith. You've given us a double-edged sword, the living word of God. Bless us and guide us so that you surround us with pastors, teachers, and ministers, and prophets and apostles that you've, you've guided with Anita and, you, and the man. 
bring us to your road of truth. Bring us to the road of grace, or many are called on few, and leads us to the straightener, or many are called on few are chosen. We ask you to teach those in countries that need to be taught how to pray because the pastors are not fed properly. And may all be an example to lift their African brothers and sisters, India, Asia, in China, surrounding Asian countries in the Pacific Rim, to teach all into unity of the Holy Spirit, one love, one mind, one truth. Let's all walk in love, brethren, in Jesus' name. That concludes our time and our broadcast for this evening. On behalf of Anita Hewitt and yours truly, the man Brian Hewitt, we thank you for your time. And until next time, and this concludes our worldwide broadcast, keep up to date with all of our information at bryanthewitt.com. And that's bryanthewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, audios. Good day for the people.